There are more than 2,000 named ships known to have been lost in Rhode Island waters from colonial to modern times. Some are historically significant, but most are common commercial vessels. The locations of a few are known, but most have been lost to view. The Rhode Island Marine Archaeology Project, RIMAP, has studied many of these. This is RIMAP's Not the Gatsby Study of two unidentified shipwrecks in nearby Occupacetuxet Cove, south of Gatsby Point in Warwick, Rhode Island. HMS Gatsby was the Royal Navy vessel burned by Patriots at Gatsby Point in 1772, and her remains have not yet been found. The two shipwrecks were the focus of a seven-year archaeological investigation by a RIMAP team, made mainly of local Warwick volunteers. These sites are unidentified, and the Rhode Island Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission labeled them RI-2217 and RI-2218 for the state inventory of submerged cultural resources. The team was organized by Rhode Island State Representative Joe McNamara, and RIMAP's Dr. Kathy Abbas was principal investigator. These were residents of Gatsby Point that grew up with some possible myths, stories, playing on these wrecks. They had never really had questions answered about them. So, you know, I would like to say, you know, we started out looking in search of the HMS Gatsby, and what we ended up finding was a community that embraces its marine heritage for far more than just one shipwreck, the several that we've investigated and learning from them and valuing them as a key part of our heritage and history. These two shipwrecks are exposed only on a moon low tide, the lowest tides every month. Over seven years, this RIMAP team investigated these two wrecks by reviewing historical sources, conducting archaeological field investigations, and collecting local Warwick memories. One of the greatest pleasures that we had were listening to the stories that people in the community had relating to the two wrecks. So the people who were sort of squatters, and they only lived there during the summer. There was a window boxes, there were red checkered cloths, and with geraniums, and they had a little dog. She said, I remember the little dog. There was no heat, so nobody lived in the winter. It was just... There was another, call it urban myth on Gatsby Point, that at one time there were some gypsies who were living on one of these wrecks, and later the wreck mysteriously burned. My brother and I witnessed that one, and, uh, and it was on December, just before the war broke out, 1941 and it was a little bit of light snow and we stood out on the lawn without our coats on and watched that barge burn down to the waterline. So whether those stories are accurate or reflect possibly prejudice of the times, who knows? But it was certainly fun listening to those stories and trying to put a picture together of our maritime history. RIMAP participation started with basic archaeology training at Warwick Library. So we're handing out flyers and the newspaper. Uh, you know, we started to get questions, people asking, oh, do I have to be a scuba diver? And, you know, the answer was no. I said, you might have to roll up your pants a little bit and get your feet muddy, but uh, other than that, uh, you'll be a major contributor and part of this team. Joe called us up and explained to us that the doctor would be running classes and we had to go to classes because, as I say, you become a, a jock, a junior, a junior archaeologist. And uh, we learned and we studied and then we saw the uses of it by getting out there and taking all the measurements of the boat and, you know, we, we saw how it all fell apart fell together. I've always had a fascination um, with marine archaeology. I always wanted to be Dirk Pitt, who is a character in the Clive Cusler books. 
I read them a lot and I just thought that that was just a fascinating um, vocation to have. So when I saw that Dr. Bass was doing the study, I said, I want to be part of it. And we were told pretty much an idea of what we were going to be doing and we learned a bit about archaeology and how you really cannot jump to conclusions in archaeology. You really have to be pretty exact in what you say and what you do and the way that you handle any artifacts, whether it be the entire vessel itself or just small pieces. You don't want to disturb anything. There was as much training during the archaeological field work as there was in the formal class. What attracted people to this particular project was the diversity of the individuals in the project, the easy access that we had to wrecks that were from different centuries available to us, and also the fact that we were being led by one of the best professionals in the field. We were all teamed up with another person. Somebody would write, somebody would do a study, somebody would write out numbers, somebody would measure. And to do that, we had to be listening, we had to be cooperative and cooperate with the person that was our partner. The group got together very well. Everybody seemed to know each other, and even when you exchanged partners, so to speak, and did different jobs while we were there, it was, it was still fun. You, you were always learning. That's the main thing, you're always learning. You look at things in a totally different way now when you look out at the water and you look out at the, uh, the barges and all. With special pandemic precautions, in the years 2020 and 2021, the team did simple test pit excavations to determine if their ship's structure embedded deep in the sand of Green Island. The first excavation adjacent to the stern structure found only a modern key, probably lost by a recent visitor to the island. The second excavation within the stern structure did not find the expected timbers beneath, so it is unclear if there is a complete structure from RI-2218, or if it is just a deck that has washed in from elsewhere. Despite these speculations, there is no reliable identification of RI-2217 or RI-2218. But these two sites are not the Gatsby, because they are twice the overall length of that Royal Navy ship. And although RI-2217 and RI-2218 still cannot be identified as specific colonial or 19th century vessels, they are protected from human disturbance by state and federal laws. This Not the Gatsby study has shown that members of the public can do proper historical and archaeological studies. And the trained Not the Gatsby team is now poised to join the RIMAP study to find HMS Gatsby. But more importantly, these volunteers are now citizen leaders for the protection of Rhode Island's maritime heritage, especially its shipwrecks. That is the measure of, not the Gatsby's, success. I thought it was one of the best experiences I've had. To know that these things that were barges that sailed, that carried coal, that ended up beached, as it were. They had lives. They carried people, they carried experiences, and we saw it at the other end. I have seen the expense that it takes to properly document a wreck site, and that puts the search for the Gatsby in a very new light. And I'm also aware of the etiquette involved, professional etiquette, in exploring these sites. So that's probably one of the greatest contributions of this project.